Yes, Lord, we celebrate your goodness tonight. Come on. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Merry, Merry, Merry Christmas from RCCG Central Parish here in Abuja. We rejoice with you on behalf of our Father and the Lord, our parents in the Lord, Pastor and Pastor Mrs. E.A. Odeyemi, the Continental Overseer, Africa Continent 2, with the headquarters here in Central Parish, Abuja, and all the ministers, the pastorate, the workforce, and members of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Central Parish, Abuja. We celebrate with you and we say, Merry, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year in advance in the name of Jesus. Amen. And you can be sure that the divine Santa Claus is bringing your special Christmas blessing to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Welcome to Psalm for the Day today. And our Psalm for today is going to be taken from uh, Psalm 119, Psalm 119, verse 129 to 136. Psalm 119 from verse 129 to 136. Let's take a word of prayer. Jesus, the Son of God, we thank you for coming to the world as a child, as a baby, for coming into the world to help us see that we can live a life of dominion, of victory, of blessings, of prosperity in life. Thank you, Lord, for choosing to come in the form of a baby, in the form of flesh like we on earth for giving yourself to us. We cannot thank you enough, Jesus. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name as we celebrate all over the world your birth today when you came to the world. We pray that the blessings of this season, the joy and celebration of this season will abide with every life, with every home, everyone listening in right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So our Bible reading for today is from Psalm 119, verse 129 to 136. The Bible says, Thy testimonies are wonderful, therefore doth my soul keep them. The entrance of thy words giveth light, and it giveth understanding unto the simple. I opened my mouth and panted, for I longed for thy commandment. Look down upon me, and be merciful unto me, as thou usest to do unto those that love thy name. Order my steps in thy word, and let not any man or any iniquity have dominion over me. Deliver me from the oppression of man, so will I keep thy precept. Verse 135, make thy face to shine upon thy servant, and teach me thy statutes. Rivers of waters run down mine eyes, because they keep not thy law. Can I straight away pray for someone watching right now that every tear, secret tear, or open tear that you are shedding at this point in time, things that you are going through causing pain in your heart and causing you to weep. I pray that by the mercy of God, by the joy of this season, by the good news of the coming of Jesus, those tears will be wiped away from your eyes in the name of Jesus. The person that God will send your way to bring an end to that weeping in your life. God will send the person in the name of Jesus. The direction you need to go, the step you need to take for that tear, that pain to be off your eyes and off your life, God will lead you in that path in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. In this Psalm, Psalm 119, 129 to 136, we see David bringing to us the power and the possibilities in the word of God. The power and the possibilities in the word of God. The word of God is potent enough to demonstrate the power of God. The Bible says, your word, O Lord, is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. So David is letting us know today, letting you know today that hold on to God's word. It's potent and powerful. From the first verse in that Psalm 119, verse 129, what we see there is David saying, the testimonies of God are wonderful. Isn't it wonderful that Jesus is sent to the world as a wonder to the world to make your life a wonder? Therefore, doth thy soul, my soul, keepeth them. My soul keeps 
the testimonies of God, what God says about himself, what he calls himself must be hidden in my heart. I must keep them in my heart for me to experience his wonders. And that is what David is saying to you, that when you behold the handiwork of God, when you behold who God says he is, and you keep them in your heart, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the everlasting Father, the Prince of peace, all these testimonies of God about himself, they should paint a picture in your mind and they should bring to you the reality of what God can do for you, of the wonders God can make to happen in your life. So David says, your testimonies are wonderful as I keep them in my soul. God's word in your heart gives you light and understanding. One of the powers in the word of God being made manifest in your life is that it gives you light and understanding. The Bible says in the beginning, according to John chapter 1, the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. He says, and without him was not anything made that was made. He says, in, in him was life and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness and darkness comprehends it not. That is the power of God's word. Whatever the activity of darkness is around you, around your family, it doesn't matter how thick or how prolonged it's been. As soon as you introduce the light of the word of God, as soon as you receive revelation and insight, from the word of God, believing that God said it, I believe it, that settles it, darkness will bow, darkness will give way. That is the power in God's word. From that place that we read, he says, the entrance of your word giveth light and it giveth understanding to the simple. What seemed to be confusing around you, what seemed to be not clear to you, you receive understanding when the word of God enters your heart as light, when you meditate on the wonders of the testimonies of God's word, God's personality, light and understanding come into you. And from the word of God, we also receive his mercy. He says in that verse, in verse 131, I opened my mouth and panted for I long for thy commandment. He says, look thou upon me and be merciful unto me as thou usest to do unto those who love thy name. Remember where we started from? Loving the testimony of God about himself, that is what God says about himself, what he calls himself. So he says, when I love the testimony of who you call yourself, your name, David now says, I will enjoy your mercy. You will look upon me with your eyes of mercy. You will know that I cannot help myself. You will know that I am insufficient of myself. You will look upon me with your eyes of mercy as you do unto those who love your name. Can you just declare with your mouth, Jesus, I love your name. Emmanuel, I love your name. You are my savior. You are my redeemer. You are my restorer. You are my helper. I love your name. Lord, we declare with our mouth because we believe in our heart that we love your name. Accept our declaration, and show us mercy. The Lord will show you mercy in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. This word also, we are talking about the power and the possibilities in the name of Jesus, in the word of God. This word also gives direction and dominion. Direction and dominion. 133 of that Psalm 119 says, Order my steps in thy word, and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. So his word gives direction to your path, to your feet. You just do things, you make moves that are beyond your own human comprehension, beyond your own calculation and plans. Why? Because you dwell in the Word. And every move you make, they are guided by the Word of God. Your steps are ordered. He says the steps of a righteous man, they are ordered by the Lord. That is the efficacy in God's Word to give direction to you. And as you prepare for the year 2023, as you hold on to God's word and you meditate on it, you begin to know what to do from day one in January, January 1, 2023, in the mighty name of Jesus. And it will keep guiding your path to the point that you will know that 2023 will be far glorious for you than 2022 in the name of Jesus. The word gives you dominion and victory over the forces and the affairs of life. 
In fact, that word connects you with Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. When God blessed you and said you should be fruitful, you should multiply, subdue, replenish, and have dominion. You have dominion through the power in the word of God. Hallelujah. And finally, in verse 135, it says, Make thy face to shine upon thy servant and teach me thy statutes. Let's read 134. It says, Deliver me from the oppression of man, so will I keep thy precept. So in his word, you receive deliverance from oppression. The devil wanted to oppress Jesus in Matthew chapter 4. Oh, when Jesus, after Jesus had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and he was hungered, he knew the devil wanted to take advantage of him, and he wanted to oppress him, to bow to him. But Jesus said, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone. It is written, but by every word of God. It is written, you shall serve your God and your God alone, and him only will you worship. It is written. So the power of it is written in the word of God gives you deliverance, and it gives you freedom from the oppression of the enemy. The Bible says in John chapter 8, verse 32, you will know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The power of freedom and dominion, deliverance, is in the word of God. Receive it, manifest in it, as you launch powerfully into the coming year in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. One more time, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year in advance. Yes, Lord, we celebrate your goodness tonight.